Welcome to A Healthy Curiosity, the podcast that explores what it takes to be well in a busy world with self-care strategies from Chinese medicine. I'm your host, Brody Welch, here to support you on your journey of health, happiness, and personal evolution. Happy New Year! Since, again, I did not have a guest lined up for today's show, I thought that I would talk a little bit about habit change, because it's one of the most important things that I do with my patients is to coach them on creating new habits because it's really the power of what we do over and over again that shapes who we become. And that's true, especially uh, for habits around health, around mindfulness, and around how we relate to the world. So it's, it's those things that we do over and over again that have the gravity and that obviously have a multiplier effect. If you can imagine if you did this every day for the rest of your life, where that would take you. So this is the time of year where people make New Year's resolutions, which I think is a perilous and treacherous thing. The research on failure rate of New Year's resolutions is like 92%, according to an article that I checked today from James Clear, who's a a habit change expert. And I think there's a lot of reasons for that, but mainly because people don't set good goals and don't set themselves up for success. So I wanted to talk today about why resolutions are a terrible idea, but why systems and habit change hacking can be really powerful and key. So here we go. Changing something small can be amazingly powerful. Like if you're not currently in the habit of exercising and the first step towards that goal might be simply getting the equipment that you need or the clothes that you're going to wear to work out in and putting them by your bed so that they're the first thing you see in the morning. The next small step could be actually putting those clothes on and exercising for one minute. It's way better than not doing it at all. And you might find that once you've gotten over the hurdle of starting, that it's just easier to continue. So whether that's meditating or exercise, uh, a lot of times just starting, just starting can be the hardest part. So figuring out when and where you're going to do this new habit and making it the easy thing, because it takes energy to start a new habit, to carve a new groove into your world. So allowing the new thing to be obstacle free. Figuring out when in your day this new habit is going to happen, if it's not scheduled, it's very likely to not happen. So thinking about when would work to get this new routine into effect and Hooking the new habit onto something that you already do can be a handy strategy. So if you already have a routine of getting up and brushing your teeth, then adding a new habit in right after teeth brushing could be, that could be a trigger. Another popular trigger is the time of day that something happens. So whether this is setting a little alarm on your computer or your phone to cue you, or whether it's just simply, oh, it's it's nine o'clock, this is when I start my bedtime wind down routine, whatever it is. Uh, let it be cued by either time or something that already exists that you do regularly. Habits exist in and are reinforced by a habit loop, which was identified by B.J. Fogg. And I was first exposed to the habit loop by Charles Duhigg's book, The Power of Habit. So basically, you have a trigger, a behavior, and a reward. And that that's how habits reinforce one another. So there is something that cues your habit. There's the behavior itself. And then there is the reward, the dopamine hit that you get from having done the habit. And so if it's like, oh, well, I always have dessert after dinner. In that case, dinner is the trigger for the habit of getting dessert. And the reward is how you feel when you eat dessert. So in terms of figuring out upgrading your habits, making them healthier and more in line with the person that you would like to become, identifying what the trigger is for the behavior that you'd like to change, substituting a different behavior that gives you the same reward. So being able to, instead of after dinner being cued to have dessert, maybe you have a cup of tea or maybe you get yourself out of the kitchen so that you're not craving dessert and get the dopamine hit that comes from exercise or that comes from the joy of spending time with a loved one, something like that. So being able to identify what your current triggers are, substitution behaviors that can lead to the same payoff that you were getting with your old habit. So the thing that is hard about that is that obviously 
it's powerful that the weight of habits have this inertia. We've been doing them for a while and we're so used to that particular dopamine payoff from that behavior. And so it can be difficult to find a substitute behavior, but looking and trying to identify the same need that you are trying to meet can be useful. The other thing that can help you succeed is by tapping into your deep why. It's like, why is it really important for you to create this new habit? And finding something in your environment that can remind you of your deep why so that in those moments of weakness where it's just more tempting to eat dessert rather than to go for a walk or connect with your loved one, that instead you're reminded, oh right, you know, like here I am bothering with this behavior change because it's really important to me to feel healthy and strong. So I might have a picture of a friend of mine who is healthy and strong in the ways that I want to be and I can use that as inspiration. Or maybe I empower a rock to symbolize that for me and I keep that in my pocket. And so in those moments of weakness, I feel my rock and I remember, yes, healthy and strong is how I want to feel. And this old behavior is just out of date and isn't in alignment with that. The other thing about small goals and achieving them is that it helps you feel like you are in fact a person who embodies this new behavior. It helps you take on the identity of who you want to become because you are already doing it. You're already started. That even if you exercise for one minute, you're a person who exercises. Even if you meditate for one minute a day, you're a meditator. And so it helps you step into that new identity. So giving yourself credit when you succeed in a new habit routine is really important so that you keep doing it just so that you can acknowledge to yourself that this is who you are becoming. It can also be really great to let other people in on what you're doing and who in your life could either be a a cheerleader for this new behavior and encourage you on this way, who in your life has this new habit that you want and could maybe check in with you about it. And having a group of people who believe that you can do it is also super important. That's like support groups are all about a community of like-minded people who believe in change. So creating that for yourself, even if it's just one person in your life, maybe it's your healthcare practitioner, maybe it's a good friend, maybe it's somebody online, but being able to connect with someone who believes that change is possible for you in this way can also be super important. So that's my take on habit change tips and why resolutions are a terrible idea unless you have a system to back it up. Anyway, thanks for listening, and I'd love to know what you'd like to hear more of on the show. You can shoot me an email at brody at brodywelch.com. That's Brody with an I-E and Welch with a C-H. And let me know what's on your mind or what you'd like to hear about. Thanks for listening today. For more episodes of A Healthy Curiosity, you can visit the iTunes store. If you appreciated today's show, please leave us a review. This helps other people to find the podcast. You can also head to brodywelch.com where you can find free self-care resources, learn more about Chinese medicine, and let me know what you'd like to hear about on future episodes. I'd love to hear from you. Till next time, be good to yourself.